Hi everyone, this is Maurice from uh, Crypt Keepers Workshop. Uh, I'm going to attempt to repair this Acer uh, X203H LCD monitor. I believe it's an, a 20 inch monitor. Um, I've never done this before. Uh, I do repair computers and tinker with them, um, build them. I've been doing it for quite some time, but I've never attempted the repair of a monitor. Um, I've learned from watching other people online um, repair these that uh, when the um, when the light is just blinking or it has issues going on and off um, like this one this one just will not start up if you can see I don't know if you can see there the uh, light just continually blinks and it never comes on I don't get a picture so um, Usually it's a, um, a group of capacitors have gone bad on the main power board and even maybe on the logic board. So uh, I'm going to attempt to take it apart and fix it and put it back together. Alright, one of the first steps in uh, dismantling this monitor is to take these little caps off here. If you notice, I've got it unplugged um, I have the stand off and uh, one of the first steps is to remove these little caps that sit here access the screws for the stand and then uh, there's a screw under here to get to to unscrew uh, to release the rest of this just snaps apart you have to pry it with a little tiny screwdriver like this mini one here and uh, it should all just unsnap after that. I'll uh, come back when I have that done. All right, I've got that done. The four screws are out, and now this just lifts off these two pins. And there's my hidden screw that's holding the rest of this together. I previously have unsnapped this. You have to be careful, just find the right pry points. I kind of broke a couple of them here. I didn't know what I was doing. It was the first time I'm doing this, so I'll just be a little careful, pry it all apart. Then when you get here, you just have to take this one screw out. I'll come back when I have that done. All right, I've turned the monitor over and um, I've pried the edges here gently so that the edges came up. Um, and on this monitor, the hardest part is when you get over here towards all these buttons. You pry this apart, and you really, it really doesn't come any further. So the only thing I found you can do is lift up what you have, and then gently pry there against the frame, and eventually the whole thing will unsnap, and you'll get the whole cover off like this. And you'll expose the uh, monitor itself and the uh, hard metal frame. There's a board over here where the buttons uh, line up to, and that just unsnaps. It just pulls right out. Just pulls right out, and you unplug it right there. And I'll come back when I have that done. Alright, so I got the board off, and now on this monitor you have to be really careful. Um, it's attached in the back in three spots and one is this really delicate um, ribbon cable here and two others on the far side. So uh, I'm going to attempt to unplug this from the bottom side. Um, there's two clips that you press in um, and then the ribbon cable should come out. Alright, so I got that done and now there are two more really small connections on the far side don't know if you can see them but they're way over there um, so I'm gonna try to uh, unplug those or see how those plug in uh, you may have to take some tape off from the other side uh, but don't be afraid of doing that uh, you can just put it back together and everything should be fine okay I removed some some of the tape here I gave myself a little more room to move around and it turns out they don't unplug from the um, from the monitor itself they unplug from the board 
and this whole metal piece just lifts right out of the monitor at this point and it makes it ten times easier to work on so um, that's what I'm going to do and I'll have it apart uh, the monitor separator when I come back okay so I have the um, monitor separated from the power supply and the logic board and this little metal frame and this is really what you're interested in is behind this board and this board will come out with a few screws and it'll just lift right out uh, and same with this you might as well take it out and just inspect it see if there's any of the uh, capacitors um, on this one as well as you can see this is where the monitor would plug in and that would be your main power board right here and I'll uh, take those screws out when I come back alright I got all the screws out um, on this model before you can lift the board out you have to either take this little wire off here this is the one that goes to the buttons in the front panel unplug this or just let the release this cable from this harn from the uh, tabs here and pull it through um, I think I'm I think you have to unplug it so uh, I'll come back when I have that done alright I'm back here and uh, got all the screws out and I got that uh, the little wiring harness there unplugged right there and uh, turns out that um, on this model you have to unplug this cable here from the main board but this side doesn't unplug from here you have to unplug it this one from this little board here so this one just unplugs and then the whole board pulls right out like so okay. and upon inspecting this board what you'll notice is the capacitors the main capacitors are all look pretty good except for this very first one here I don't know if you can see that but that one there is bulged out at the top a little bit. Let's see if I can get the video of that. You can see it right there. That one's bulged at the top. All the others look pretty flat. You can see here this one here. And this one here is bulged out. You can see it's kind of rounded. And these are all okay. And then to get the rest of this board out to inspect this board might as well while you have the whole thing apart you have to take these little uh, bolts out here that hold the the um, video cable um, attachments in for the VGA and the DMI so uh, I'll come back when I have that done and we'll inspect that board alright so I've got that board out and I've given a good close looking at and um, these these uh, capacitors all look really good. I don't see anything damaged on the board. Nothing looks overheated. There's no heat stains on this little board. Uh, so I'm just going to pop that one back in. And I'm going to concentrate on this board, uh, being that this is the power supply. I don't really see anything that looks overheated. I mean, if, on the camera it looks like this is these are overheated, but they're really not. Uh, the only thing that I see that looks a little overheated is this little resistor here. But I inspected the bottom of the board. It doesn't seem to be unsoldered or overheated uh, on that side. There's a few components on the other side of this board, but uh, I've given the board a pretty close look at it, and uh, I don't see anything else that's of any concern. Uh, and in the spot where that resistor is looks pretty good. There's nothing unsoldered or broken off. Um, so I think I, I got a pretty lucky. I just have this one capacitor to replace and uh, I'll come back when I have that done. I'll show you how to take it out and how to put the new one in. And by the way, these have to go back in in the same direction. They have a negative side. If you see that gray stripe there, that gray stripe on that side points to the negative side. And on this board, if you notice, this little I don't know if you guys can see it here. This little tab here is pointing on the board to this, uh, to the, uh, 
Okay, so the camera crapped out on me there, but uh, what I was saying is these uh, these traces on this board, if you can look here, some unoccupied spots here, they have a little uh, pointer to the negative side. So when you um, put your capacitor back in, make sure it's pointed to the to the negative side over here, uh, shown on this one here. Now I went out to Radio Shack and I got myself a replacement and it called for 1025 volt. Now what's really important is uh, the microfarad rating. You want to get the exact same microfarad rating but the voltage can be a little higher. Mine was 25 volts so I got a 35 volt which is perfectly fine. Um, doesn't look exactly the same from what I understand this is a cheaper manufacturer but that's all Radio Shack had. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take this one out, try to show you that as I do it. And uh, I have my little Radio Shack butane soldering iron. You've got to keep it really low because you don't want to overheat the board. Some solder to put it back in. And this is um, flux. You really don't need this. It's really for this little job. Uh, I just like to have it. And I use um, desoldering braid. It helps uh, from the... Um, stuff the hole getting all sloppy and uh, you can just clean up the hole really nice uh, to before you put the new one back in so uh, I'll be right back all right um, I have the board here and I'm about to start replacing the um, capacitor now a good way to uh, to figure out which solder point to remove is to take a really bright flashlight and shine it behind the board. I hope the camera can pick this up. And it helps you pinpoint which solder point to to take off, to uh, remove. So uh, I've already done that. I can see the two that I need to remove. And I'm going to start on solder on this. Alright, I've got the soldering iron heated up and I have it on the lowest setting. We don't want to overheat this board. Just want to uh, unsolder the two traces that you need. So here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stand this board up, put my finger on the capacitor that I want to remove. I'm going to apply a little pressure pulling in one direction. I'm going to gently pull it out as the trace becomes unsoldered. If you can see this. And I'm going to do the other side. Same thing here on the other side. And then you just keep working it back and forth until it slides out. All right, that's one side. Okay, I've got it free. There it is. Okay, and now I'm just going to clean up the holes with the desoldering braid. Okay, there you go. Alright, so I placed a new um, capacitor in the board and very important, like I said before, to make sure that the marking here, which signifies the negative, 
is pointing towards the pointer on the board. And then what I like to do is I place it in there before I solder it. And I don't know if the camera is going to catch that. But I bend them slightly so the capacitor stays in there. And then we just solder it up. Okay, so I have the um, the new capacitor soldered in there. I don't know if you can see that. Right there. Okay, now all you have to do is um, just clip those wires off. And I use a little flux to keep the, if you can see it there, it's a little glommed up. It keeps the, the uh, solder only flowing onto the uh, metal patch. Um, without it, you'll, you'll get solder all over the wire, but it won't necessarily make contact with the patch. So, we're just going to clip these off, like so. Get it as close down. I use a little pair of, uh, of uh, angled pliers, angle cutting pliers. And we just clip them right off, as far down as we can get. And then just clean that solder off because it will uh, corrode uh, in a little while. So we want it to last long. So, all right, so that's all there is to it. I'll come back when I have uh, the rest of this put back together. Uh, I'm not going to put you through watching all that. But basically, you put it back together the way you took it apart. And um, we'll start up when I come back. All right, as you can see, I got the whole monitor put back together. And uh, a couple little things. I broke a couple of tabs on one, one of the sides here, uh, but it's no big deal. There's plenty of tabs to hold the thing back together. Like I said, these newer monitors, all uh, they just snap together. Um, the little board that goes behind here for the switches, uh, you just have to be careful because there's a metal piece that has to be put in a certain way. And I found it was easier to mount the board in this front cover first tape it in with a little scotch tape and then plug it and then snap it all back together. It kind of keeps your hands free so you can uh, plug the plug in. Um, and here's a moment of truth so I was going to do it for the first time here. See what happens. Alright, the lights lit up. And success! Alright, that's great. And it's saying no input. Well, we have uh, my little rig set up here, so let's give it a shot and see what it looks like. See if it actually kicks on with Windows. There we go. Success. And all that from just a $2 part. Radio Shack was $2. I actually got um, one that was a little higher voltage. It was a little cheaper brand, but it was a little higher voltage, so it should last a little longer or just as long. So uh, hopefully this monitor will last uh, for quite some time. It looks good. I don't see any dead pixels, uh, and it's uh, running normally. So it's a great little project uh, for those of you who are a little bit uh, technical. Um, it's easy to do. It really was just a $2 part and um, a few hours of labor. Alright guys, take care.